return to your scheduled programming shortly, or we are currently experiencing technical difficulties. <sighs> what is going on, YouTube? Michael J. Crawford, the Anti Trekker, here, and I'm in a foul mood today, but I do want to say hi, you guys. Hey, Thomas, John, Don Juan. Uh, Thomas was our winner of the 10 internet points today for being first. Uh, Captain George is here early today, and Kronos is here. I haven't seen you in a couple days. Good to see you, my friend. Uh, Joshua Hammond is also here, and all of the rest. Michael Dunn is here. I, I know I, I could spend my whole day just saying hi to everybody, but thank you for joining me. I truly do appreciate it. Uh, today was a stupid day in this country. Thank God for you. <laughs> We're number three. Oh, but I, you know, that's a good way to put today. Uh, I, I don't know what you're referring to, but yeah, I got a, I got a couple of things here. But yes, uh, Uber number three, let's bring that up. Look, that's not it. That's the new one. Uh, here's Uber number three. <laughs> I do love me that last little noise. And by the way, Kronos, I know you that, that your interest was peaked in that split second of the accidental reveal the, review there reveal there. However, um, it it does have something to do with something that you've mentioned to me on Discord. So uh, it's not exactly what you were what you were asking for, but I think you will really enjoy it when you see it. Um, so, but Thomas, I do want to know what specifically you're talking about as far as being a stupid day, because I'm sure what I'm thinking of and what you're thinking of are two totally different things. Um, Xavier likes the shirt. Uh, someone said I'm spider anti-trekker. No, I'm anti-spider, I guess. Um, but, um, it says CBS does not love us. That is true. As far I, I actually just before this stream, the reason I'm a few minutes late is I was watching Doomcock's rant about the CBS situation, and not a half bad rant. Um, I think that mine was a little more reserved, and so you know some people may not care for the fact that I didn't go all over the top like I did with the Roman Polanski thing, but. The, um, you're referring to the stupidity of, I, you know what, Thomas, I haven't even, I'll, the only thing I know about politics right now is I know that there's some Supreme Court justice that they're accusing of having con sexually assaulted someone in high school or something. And, you know, I, I, I haven't been following the story. And so I just found out about that this morning and when the wife was watching the news and I was like, really? So what it was probably, you know, so given, given his age and everything, we're probably talking about the somewhere between the sixties and the, and the seventies that he was in high school. He was probably in a car with some girl after a date and trying to get to third base. And she said, no. And he tried again and she said, no. And then that's it. And so now that's of course, reason to not let him be on the Supreme court. As opposed to, and this is my problem with this kind of thing, and I don't know specifically if if, uh, if you're not, if th this is what you're talking about. But as far as the, this guy with the, um, the Supreme Court, is that Kavanaugh? Because if so, then, then we're on the same page there. Um, and... Give, and give me just a second. I will. I will check out what the moths did in just a second here, Kronos. Uh, let me finish this little rant here for just a second. Uh, he, 1983. Okay, yeah. So he, when you're trying to put somebody on the Supreme Court of the freaking United States, do I care about the fact that he may or may not have been kind of a jerk in high school? Keep in mind, no, at least as far as I know, nobody's uh, accusing him of rape or anything like that. But if he, sexual assault, probably meaning that he tried to get with a girl and didn't. And 
is that a qualifier as far as being on the Supreme Court of the United States? In my opinion, no. What the, the whole point of confirmation to the Supreme Court is to find out if they have an unbiased, unfiltered view on the Constitution of the United States. If they can impartially determine whether something is constitutional or not. That is the job of the Supreme Court. I do not care if uh, a justice being put up is a Democrat or Republican or an Independent, and I don't care if he was the nicest guy on the planet or a complete and utter jerk. What I care about is does this guy understand the Constitution and can he impartially interpret the Constitution? If he can do that, great, put him up there. So, yeah, anyway, I... I apologize, but yeah, so that's one thing. Um, there's also, of course, uh, yeah, CBS apparently hates us all, and I'm just so sick, and, and that's why I, I put up my video today that I did, um, because obviously, you know, CBS needs to, they need to freaking learn to, to respect the fans. And I, I don't understand why they don't. I genuinely don't. Anyway, uh, Chronos, so thank you so much for putting a donation into the into the Pritter Fund. I'm truly sorry. I, I didn't mean to go on a tirade there. Uh, however, so that means you get to pick one. And I have a sneaking suspicion which one you might pick. But I still have to ask you, my friend. So please do. And no, I, no, no need to apologize for interrupting my ranting. I just, yeah. That's just one of the things. Huh, stage nine is not gone. I made you that. Well, here's the thing, Captain George. And and I and in all fairness, yeah, Captain George has the the files for stage nine, and he offered to share them with me so I could check it out. And I won't do that. Not because, and, and believe me, I appreciate what Captain George offered. I truly do. And you know, and if he offers it to other people, hey, take him up on it by all means if that's your thing. However. I have said over and over and over on this channel that I will not violate copyright law. And if CBS put a cease and desist on stage nine, I'm not going, even though I would love to check it out, I'm not going to because I'm not going to be a hypocrite. Yes, he wants the uh, question mark one. You got it. And so this is a little something that I think you guys will really enjoy. And it came from the inspiration directly from Kronos. So... Uh, the name, uh, actually here, uh, just for fun, let me go back here. I'm going to reveal the name of this one before we actually do it. So the name of the new Uber chat is, meanwhile, in the 80s. <laughs> so that should give you some kind of idea where it's going. And let's check this out. Anybody really know why we're fighting anyway? Well, um, I think. Hey, didn't he vote for Trump? Hmm? He did. Get him! Get him! Get him! So remember, if anyone has an opinion, they're probably wrong. Now, now we, we know. know! And knowing is half the battle. G.I. <laughs> there it is. Every 80s cartoon rolled into one. <laughs> Oh man, that 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 cheered me up a little bit. Um, Thomas says I'm really dark. To yeah, the lighting. I don't know what it is about these webcams. They're very inconsistent. I apologize for that. Um, so Kronos likes the uh, the new. Meanwhile, in the '80s, uh, care care bro. <laughs> <What the hell? laughs> that was that was entirely Joshua's idea. Throwing the care bear in there at the end, which I thought was hilarious. Uh, so. Uh, <laughs> so, uh, do I need a hug? I kind of do need a hug today, I tell you. So, so besides the CBS thing, and besides the Kavanaugh thing, those are bad enough, right? And, and CBS kind of started my day off in a foul mood, because I didn't know the extent of what was going on with them until uh, some of you mentioned it in my last live stream, and I, and I did a little digging on it. And <clears throat> um, that really pisses me off. CBS... I'm not talking about legality or morality or anything like that. Just, I don't understand their corporate. Okay, I'm getting some Romney. And I, by the way, look at this. 
Romulan ale. I made it myself. So this is the real deal here, folks. All right. So Kronos, thank you so much. Ah, yes. <sighs> so, um, <laughs> the, uh, but then the Dark Phoenix trailer dropped today. So, I had to put my plans on hold. I'm doing a video about that tomorrow. Ugh. And, I don't know, maybe it'll be good. But I doubt it. All right, so... <laughs> uh, Romulan Ale on the rocks are neat. Well, Romulan Ale, you should always drink uh, neat, actually. The Romulan Ale is... Uh, it's best served chilled, but it's it's... It's supposed to be neat. And John, Dark Phoenix was... I, I was... I'm not going to get into the Dark Phoenix trailer right now because that I am going to put out a video about that tomorrow. But suffice to say... Uh, and no, I did not care for X-Men Apocalypse. I thought it was a mess. Uh, the... Nothing in this trailer is something we haven't already seen in prior X-Men uh, films. So it's, it, it's, and yeah, it's, inc it's very underwhelming to be sure, but I'll get, yeah. Uh, best served shield. <laughs> yes. If you're, if you're drinking with, uh, if you're drinking with lower reloaded, you should always serve your drinks shield. Um, uh, anti trucker is doing himself a disservice. Brandon, why is that? Oh, be, oh, for not playing uh, Stage 9. I Don't get me wrong. I would love to play it. I really would. But I have to, you know, I, I, I truly believe I have to maintain my integri integrity on this. I have gone off many, many times on CBS for their blatant, willful violation and abuse of copyright law. And I am not going to complain and bitch about that while doing it myself. I simply won't do that. And so I I I'm nothing if I don't have integrity as far as I'm I'm not going to be a hypocrite. I'm not going to um, say, oh yeah, copyright matters if it affects me, but if it's CBS's copyright, screw them. No. Because as much as I hate the people at CBS right now, I'm not going to do that. Um uh, asking about the plaque. This is so far, the best print I've gotten from the plaque. I'm still tweaking the settings a little bit, but it's starting to look pretty darn good. Um, and so I'm, I'm, it's getting really, really close. So, and and fortunately, with the initial settings that I fixed, very, very solid. So I'm very happy with the progress so far. I'm sorry it's the, for the delays for those of you that I owe a ship to. You're gonna get it, and I and I know, I, I hate I hate putting things off, but I ha I don't yeah, I gotta I gotta get the plaque done. Uh, please tell me how you looking. Uh, just let's see. Please tell me how you looking just to look. At not even commentary is violating copyright. At least it's uh, at best it's just bootleg. Well, bootleg is a violation of copyright, um, and so that's the point. Is that that production is no longer a product? And granted, I know it was it was a free one. Uh, had I downloaded it the day before that happened, then yeah, I would. Uh, but even so, I would still. I certainly wouldn't put up like play videos of it or anything. In fact, the video that I did put up was from another YouTube channel, obviously, because I've never played it. Uh, I have a copy of the game before the takedown. Well, you have to because they they stopped the downloads as soon as the takedown ha uh, hit. Uh, if it's if it's a different version and you share between me and you, you should be just fine. CBS isn't, uh, can't get you for having uh, private files. It's, it's not the idea of CBS getting me. Okay, I'm not worried about that. Um, it's, it's just from my own personal, uh, just a matter of personal honor, I know that this, that this and, and even the producers of Stage 9 knew that it was a copyright violation. They said that CBS could shut them down at any time. That's 
you know, so it's not like they're like up in arms about how CBS broke the law. CBS did not break the law. CBS is absolutely correct in stopping it as far as from a legal perspective. Um, anyway, 3D print me up the next Borg video. We got 20 more to slog through. <laughs> stop, stop. Uh, 3D turd urinal cakes. Now there's an idea. <laughs> how long does the new plaque to take to complete? On this little printer, this plaque took about uh, 12 hours to print. Um, and like I said, there's, I'm just, each time I print it, I'm refining it a little bit as far as the settings and also some of the design work to make it come out a little smoother. This one, the biggest problem is you can see there's a big ridge there on the end uh, that kind of messed up. And if you look closely at it, some of the letters are partially filled in, which I'm not a big fan of, but I still like it. Um, and let's see, uh, Thomas is playing Spider-Man. I'm jealous. Uh, I do need to get that game. Did you see my comment on your video today? I thought the video, uh, I, I haven't read all the comments yet because I've been running around. Uh, it was very good, really good. I think I'm done with Star Trek and Star Wars. I'm done hoping for something that will never come. I, that's kind of, and, and Miss Anthro, this kind of related, Miss Anthro said, uh, who pissed you off? Well, same kind of subject here. I'm CBS, uh, you know, I, I've already, for the most part, given up on Star Wars, uh, but now Star Trek, I, I'm just, <sighs> oh, I'm done. And, uh, wow, I just got a Facebook notification from none other than Captain Foley, so now I guess he's going to be Facebook stalking me during the live stream. I don't know if he's watching right now, um, but... Uh, <laughs> And let's see. All right. So that's what you get for being friends with someone on Facebook. All right. I uh, wonder if Trek Yards will show up today. I don't know. Well, like I said, he sent me a Facebook thing. So I don't know what he what he's up to right now. Um, and let's see. Charles Holmes says, I'm here, man. Okay. Um, good to see you, Charles. <laughs> That's it. I'm a little confused. Um, no, the ridge is, uh, is good. Builds character. Beat up the little glue. <laughs> Back to make it <laughs> battle damage. Well, I still want. I want it to look. Not. It doesn't have to be perfect, but I want it to. Be, I want it to look good. And there he is. So Charles Holmes. I'm sorry. I, I was. I was kind of confused because you said I'm here, man. I'm not sure if that was a response to something or if, but good to see you. Yeah, I'm just a little confused. Anti Trekker smash. Yeah, I feel like smashing some things today. Um, and so good to see you, Captain. Um, and wait, 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 wait. We know. I, I just realized I gotta, I gotta do this because it's Captain Foley. And hold on, hold on. Come on, where is it? All right, guys, brace yourselves. Oh, I've done far worse than kill you, Anti-Trekker. I've hurt you. And I wish to go on hurting you. I shall leave you as you left me, as you left the Commander, marooned for all eternity in the center of a dead YouTube channel, buried in comments, <laughs> buried in comments. Uh. <laughs> so, um, oh, it's, it's because something made me, yeah, thanks, Charles, I, I appreciate it. yeah, I'm mad at a few things today, it's just like a perfect storm of anger today for me, because we had the CBS takedown of Stage 9, which I know that happened a few days ago, but, well, actually, like, a while back, but I just found out about it yesterday, and then we had the, um, you know, the, the whole thing with the confirmation. Uh, and then, on top of that, we get the um, the freaking trailer for Dark Phoenix, which was the uh, marooned in Laura's basement. Now, that's, that's Red Letter Media has got Laura uh, trapped in a basement, I think. And T throws a buck into the chat. Thank you so much. And I don't know. Uh, so, if you want to see one of the Super Chat rewards, by all means, go ahead and pick one. 
Uh, I love the buried in comments. Like, yeah, me too, because I, I I do get buried in comments sometimes. So, although I wouldn't call this a dead YouTube channel, that was kind of low, man. I mean, come on, Captain. That was that was low. Um, Chrono says that sounded good. Was that no? That was believe it or not, that voice that you just heard was indeed the voice of Captain Foley. Uh, and by the way, Captain Foley, Mrs. Anti Trekker wanted me to say that you would make an excellent villain. She loves the voice uh, that, that you did. And I know he's not here right now, but Darth Revan, she says, has a really cute take on the Irish version of Khan. And I'm not going to even say what she said about Dr. Alex because, yeah, she's not allowed to ever meet Dr. Alex now. Um, um, T says, Turtis, por favor, you got it, my friend, because who doesn't love a toilet that can fly through time and space? What? Is this right? <laughs> Good. I can feel your anger. I am defenseless. Take your weapon. Strike me down with all of your hatred, and your journey towards the dark side will be complete. And Mega Chat number one. Because Admiral hates us all. I may have a sh It's not clean. Repeat, I do not have a clean sh Oh, yeah. Kyle wants track yards to join on the uh, uh, the, <laughs> the the chat or the the stream. Um, I don't have Skype up and running right now, but I don't know, and I don't know if he's busy or not. Although for some reason he's messing around on Facebook. Um, did do you speak to Lord? Mention how often I request this video. I haven't told him that you specifically requested the video. However, he does know that. You guys love the video. How drunk when you were you when you thought this was a good idea for a video? Pretty drunk. Uh oh. It looks like Captain Foley has a message for us. I can join the stream by doing this, anti trekker. Hey guys, it's Captain Foley from Trek Yards. How are you all doing? I am here. It is true. <laughs> yeah, so Captain Foley will be joining us with occasional drop ins with his um, whatever that is, his voice abilities on Facebook. So, 
Um, so, Captain Foley, if you have something pertinent and important to say, by all means, send it to me and I will play it because you are, you know, the big channel that I got to kiss up to in order to try and get more subs. Um, so, <laughs> spending too much money on Bleach. Well, I'm sorry. So, speaking of movies, have you seen the trailer for Hunter Killer? It's a submarine film, which, to be honest, might have a horrible story, but we don't get a lot of submarine anything. I did see it. It looks kind of cheesy, to be honest with you, but it could be good. Uh, in, a, in a complete cheese, mindless kind of way. Kronos says, we don't believe you. Don't believe me about what? Uh, I'm not sure. Oh, you're talking about Nexus getting three calc questions. Well, Nexus is probably a genius, so I, I, I'm okay with that. Fred Flintstone con? I'm not... I can't do Fred Flintstone. Oh, boy. See, I, yeah, I can't do his voice. Did Captain Foley hit the like button? Well, he better have. Well, if he might have. I don't know. Uh, my spidey sense is tingling. Sorry about that. Yeah, my... Setting off the spidey sense. I have a question for Captain Foley. When the heck are you going to have Anti-Checker live on Trek Yards? We have been talking about that. Um, and so we're going to do it. It's just a matter of, um, you know, I know he's got to talk to Commander Calkins. And we got to um, arrange a time to record and all that. And so, but yeah, we are absolutely going to do that. So I am going to join them. And as far as I know right now, we're, we're planning on discussing the Borg. Which is, of course, a subject near and dear to my heart. Um, Foley must hit the dislike button. Either that or Lore Reloaded is stealthily watching right now, and he hit it. Um, and let's see. Andy Checker. Well, just uh, just think we have us get to get a Supergirl movie singing, and that'll make it all better. I hate you. I'm hoping to have Andy Checker on next week. Uh, I'm trying to figure out a way to get it done next week. I think that'll work. Um, we're going to record it then, and we will, of course, upload that at some point in the future after it's been edited, because I'm sure we're going to have to edit a lot of shit out. There <laughs> you go. Um, wow. You're, what, you have to, how would you have to edit me? I never say anything bad. I'm not Lore. I, you know, I'm certainly not going to come onto your show naked like Lore does. Uh, Never go against a Sicilian when death is on the line. <laughs> um, what is the best ship in all of Star Wars? Hmm. Well, it depends on if you're talking about um, the it's, as far as best is a relative term, right? If you want to talk. As far as power level or something, you'd probably have to be talking about like the Death Star 2 or maybe the Supremacy or something like that. If you're just talking about a cool ship, uh, you kind of got to go with the Millennium Falcon. And I mean, the Millennium Falcon is, is such an iconic ship. It's, it's, and it's the kind of ship that anyone could own. You don't have to have a crew of 10,000 people. It could just be you and your buddy and flying through space. And it'd be freaking awesome. So, yes. Um, we always get you to do con. I think we need to add that speech Picard gives about the Borg in first contact. The line must be drawn here. No further. Or redneck Picard. Redneck Picard. <laughs> oh, man. I'd have to get the text for that. Let me see. Um, redneck Picard. So we want the uh, line must be drawn here. Text. Uh, let's see. Ah, I hate. Sometimes I hate my computer. Okay, the line must. All right. So, redneck Picard. You bring that over here so I can see it. Okay. I will not sacrifice the Enterprise. We have made too many compromises already. Too many retreats. They invade our space and we fall back. They assimilate entire worlds and we fall back, but not again. 
The line must be drawn here, Dagnabbit, this far, no farther, and I will make them pay for what they've done. There you go. And scene. Um, honestly, I love the redesign of Falcon and Solo. I, I didn't hate the, the, the design of the Falcon itself. Uh, as far, I mean, because they really didn't change much. They just, you know, you could see a couple of things that you didn't get to see before. Uh, the USS Quantum is the worst ship in all of Star Trek. What is the Star Wars equivalent? Hmm. That's a good question. That I would defer to, um, to, uh, uh, Captain George if he's still here. Slim pickings. Of free. Yeah, that was the best redneck, but I was trying on short notice. Um, so Trek Yards does not approve of my redneck Picard, <laughs> but Resolute does. So, uh, so I'll take it. I'll take the small victory. Uh, thank you, Resolute. Um, you know, I, I guess I could do, um, like, what, what about, um, hmm, we, I reckon we made too many compromises, hmm, too many retreats, yep, they invade our space when we fall back, hmm, they simulate entire worlds when we fall back, hmm, not again, hmm. I reckon the line ought to be drawn right about here. Hmm. Some folks call it a border. I call it a line. Hmm. This far, hmm, no further. And I'll make them pay for what they've done. Hmm. Here you go. Um, <laughs> Kirk McCart, I can't do it. <laughs> oh, Red, Red Thanos. All right. You guys are getting crazy now. I'm not going to spend my entire live stream doing imitations unless you throw in super chats. <laughs> I'd love to get that $350 Millennium Falcon from a New Hope 170 second scale model from Bandai. That would be cool. Um, Sling Bay Professor X. <laughs> Depends on what, what speech do you mean from Professor X, though. This replicator thing make French fries? I like me French. I like them uh, some of them French fry potatoes, mm. some biscuits and mustard, mm. some of that canned meat. Uh, so the Cisco speech was better. Uh, which which Cisco speech are you talking about? Sell out? You darn right I am. <laughs> Con Christmas songs. What would Con sing in a Christmas song? Cisco did have some really good speeches. Um, I, I think that, honestly, if you look at Picard, had some real good ones, but um, Cisco, I think, had a better presence than Picard when he was given. Like when Cisco gave a, a rant, angry speech, that was you know you were like, "Oh crap!" When Picard, he would give a speech. It sounded like, "Yeah, he's going to completely kill you in debate class." But Cisco is the kind of guy that you just think, oh, he's going to kill you. Um, the Earth is Paradise speech. Uh, I'd have to look that one up. I don't know it. Um, I'm dreaming of an augment. <laughs> uh, the whole episode of Pale Moonlight -like with Redneck Cisco. <laughs> that would be Oh. Uh, Uh, do a video of your impressions. It will go viral. I don't know what I, I actually have been thinking about, uh, working with Joshua to do some like animated classic scenes from stuff and, and making the characters like sling blade and rednecks and silly stuff like that. The mask versus Deadpool in an all out fight. Well, the mask is clearly more powerful. So I would have to give it to the mask. Deadpool would not die, of course, but I think that in a straight-up fight, the mask would win, and it wouldn't be much of a contest, to be honest. Um, Xavier says, I have to agree with Lore. Cisco is my favorite captain after Kirk, of course. Well, it's, then you don't agree with Lore, because Lore believes that Cisco is better than Kirk. And so, and he actually, I think, if I remember correctly, Lore puts it Cisco, then Picard, then Kirk, which I disagree. I would go Kirk, Cisco, Picard. Um... 
And let's see. You need to record Mrs. Anti Trekker giving Leah help. Ob <laughs> That's not. Yeah, I'll have to, have to ever do that. The Earth can't be flat. If it was, cats would have pushed everything off the edge by now. <laughs> Where's Palpatine Con? I. Yeah, Captain George, why haven't you sent me the recording of Palpatine? Co oh, let's see. Check Discord. Did you send it? Let me check. Oh, let's see. All right, guys. Hello there. Yeah, you see, Captain Foley, you ain't special. I can do this, too. However, I don't think Andy Trekker's going to prioritize me as much as you, because I'm the mere director of social media, and Andy Trekker's a big proponent for rule of acquisition number 33. It never hurts to suck up to the boss. And yes, live stream chat, this is Emperor George, leaving you with one message. Do it. I, and, I was, and here I thought you were going to do your Palpatine con. And so, and instead, you just want to throw out a little insult at me. I tell you, anybody want to be the new director of social media? I think that position's about to open up here. Uh, captain Sulu is the best captain after Captain Foley. Hmm. Well, we haven't seen Captain Sulu do much. <laughs> so, wait, do what? Yeah, good question. Uh, you know, when you say do it, um, what what exactly are you are you suggesting they do? George Takei played Sulu. Oh, George Takei <laughs> played Sulu. Oh. I'll do it. Nothing will will get done, but I'll do it for free. <laughs> uh oh, uh oh! Sounds like we're gonna get a we're gonna get a fight going on here. What's this now? Has this become a call-in show now? Like seriously? N not exactly a call-in show, Captain. Apparently, just just you and Cat. It's it's like the the captain's table here. So I'm just waiting now for Mister Captain <laughs> to throw. So yeah, so the, so this is the the uh, I'm not a captain. I'm just a pile of crap. But you know, we have Captain George and on Discord and and Captain Foley on Facebook sending in fun-filled, witty things to say. Like, is this a Colin show? You see, now you need to get back to your your great, great like uh, evil take over the world kind of thing. That's where you, I think you really shine, at least according to Mrs. Antitrekker. And Mrs. Antitrekker is always right because happy wife, happy life. Uh, Mr. Miles is in the house. Good to see you, my old enemy. And Charles says, I'm also a pile of crap. I highly doubt that, Charles, because I can see your little thumbnail picture and it clearly looks like you are a two-headed monster. Uh, Captain Foley can you record yourself saying shields and fields. <laughs> oh, no. So, uh, only if you have Captain in your name can you call into the stream. Well, they can't even call in. All they're doing is sending me recordings that, you know, and, and granted, I can always hit the stop button if they start saying something crazy. Um, but yeah, so... This is the new Morton Downey show. <laughs> have I seen the Bumblebee trailer? Interesting, they went to classic G1 Transformers designs. I have not. I saw the initial trailer that came out like a couple of months ago. Um, but I have not. I assume that you're talking there's a new one that just came out. And I have not seen that. Um, yeah. How goes SG1? Uh, we The last one we watched... Um, Oh man, my brain is going. Uh... Oh yeah, it's the one where they everybody it, it, everybody switched bodies, and it was just it was the the exact same thing as in Futurama when they had to figure out how to switch everybody back because the transfer can only happen once per group for each pair of people. So you have to like mix and match it until you can get them all back to their original bodies. And I will say this, while I, I do think that SG-1 overall has gotten better as time has progressed so far, that episode is, I have a couple of beefs with it. When I get to reviewing the episodes, when I get to this episode, I'm, I'm definitely going to go on a little bit of a rant about this. Because at this point, to the best of my knowledge, there have been at least four occasions that I can think of off the top of my head 
where they've gone on a mission and somebody has come back either replaced by or possessed by somebody else. And so you would think that they would actually start to notice when somebody is acting really weird that maybe it's not really them because it hasn't been repeatedly in the past. So, yeah. Sorry. It is fun watching. I, I will say this. Yeah, the guy that plays Tilk uh, and the guy that plays O'Neill did a great job of switching it up. Uh, that that was that was a fun part of that episode. It wasn't a horrendously bad episode or anything, but it was. I mean, I, the second they got back from the Stargate and um, Dan and and Daniel was acting all funny, it's like, is nobody going to say anything about this? That once again someone is acting weird after they get back from a mission, nobody's going to say anything. And so, yeah. Um, wait until O'Neill gets turned into a teen. Oh, that'll be fun. Uh, although I will say, uh, Richard Dean Anderson has really proven his acting chops in several episodes here. So I, I'm, I'm not knocking his acting ability at all. But I'm, I'm just saying that the writing on this, come on. You're, you're really, really going to suggest that nobody would have noticed Daniel? You jealous that you can't wish, uh, which was switch with someone uh, with a younger uh, modi model body for yourself? Well, that would be nice, but it would kind of screw over the other person too. So, you know. Um, the cool thing about Stargate is they will make fun of themselves as the show goes on. I'm okay with that, but it is just kind of funny that they didn't notice it. Uh, Liger fan, Daniel, my brother. No idea what you're talking about. On a serious note, no, what pissed you off the most with the Senate hearings today? Just asking you because, as you mentioned a couple times. Honestly, just the fact that they're not focusing in on what it's, you know, what, what a Senate confirmation hearing for a Supreme Court justice is supposed to be is an honest attempt to ascertain whether this person can impartially uh, interpret the Constitution of the United States, because that is the sole responsibility of the Supreme Court. However, it's, you know, and, and granted, this isn't the first time this has happened, but it pisses me off every time, is that what it's become is, what dirt can we get on this guy to from 30 years ago that might make him look bad so that we can get somebody else and try to stall it as long as we can so that hopefully we get a Democrat in there next time so that we can get our guy. And I'm done with that game. Elton John song. God, I'm old. <laughs> um, body swapping and the loop episodes, two of my favorite sci-fi tropes. And I, and I like them overall. It's just that this one, they should have caught right away that something was wrong with Daniel. Dude, it kills me. They get captured almost every episode after they killed like three or four system lords. You would think the next guy would, would just kill them already. Yeah, <laughs> Lock yourself in a room and switch bodies with Lore and as Lore and as Lore run around naked. Well, first of all, no, I don't want to downgrade. And second of all, Lore already runs around naked, so that wouldn't do anything. Drawing for the fun of it is here. Good to see you. Says Antrek, who just got back from Japan. And boy, are your arms tired. That's like a Captain Foley joke. Um and let's see, and I'm sitting down uh, working on your project, so I'm in the house ears only unless something comes up that I can add my two cents to. Well, I'm glad that you are here drawing, and I hope that your trip to Japan was fun and or productive. Uh, what is your favorite Disney movie? We all know it's The Last Jedi. I'm going to punch you in the face for that. You say Lion King. I'm not a huge fan of Lion King, to be honest with you. Um, but... Uh, if I had to pick, man, that's a tough one. Because obviously when we think of Disney, we generally think of the, the animated films. But then I do like, for example, I love The Black Hole. That's a fun movie. Um, they've made some, some good live action films, to be sure. Um, however, since I, I'm going to, man, this is a tough one. Um, I'm going to probably say Fantasia. I really, really enjoy Fantasia. They should have done an SG-1 where they end up in the Star Trek universe. That would be awesome. 
Uh, lucky you get to go to Japan. Yeah, I'm kind of jealous of that too. I would love to go to Japan. Um, I've never been, and I've never been out of the country, to be honest. Uh, did Laura ever go on a date with Mecha Random? I don't think so, because I think Mecha Random has much better taste than that. Uh, T says, Lion King was better when remade as Black Panther. <laughs> um, oh, it was very productive. Would like to go back on vacation, not business. I can understand that. Um, but yeah, my wife would like to go to Tokyo just to shop, and that's it. <laughs> Black Hole is da bomb. Um, you're making yourself sound old there. Toy Story. Toy Story? Well, you see, that's Pixar. And I and even though uh, Pixar makes awesome movies, I, that's the same reason I didn't like consider any of the Marvel films. Even though they're owned by Disney, Pixar is technically a, a not Disney produced. And so neither is Marvel or Lucasfilm. And so I can't have picked The Last Jedi. Um, so Because if I was going to pick from all of it, I'd probably pick Infinity War. Yeah. But, yeah. The Black Hole's a good movie. A bit cheesy sometimes, but still good. Yeah, I didn't say it was a perfect film, but I'm just saying, you know, most people don't think about the, the actual Disney live-action films. Uh, applying cold water to sick burn. Wait. Applying cold water to sick burn. Are you saying you just burned yourself, and you're sick, and you're putting cold water on the burn, and you're... I'm confused. If Solo came out before The Last Jedi, do you think it would have been done been better received? Absolutely. And in fact, I was talking to a very good friend of mine about just that. Uh, in that it's not that Solo... For example, the, the uh, L33... Uh, whatever. Stupid fembot. Uh, she would have been... If, if, if it wasn't for the crap in The Last Jedi... I probably would have gotten a couple of chuckles out of her. After the last shot, it's like, geez, they're doing this again? And so, uh, yes, I think that the movie would have been better received and would have made money had it come out before uh, The Last Jedi. So what does Palpatine have to say now? L337. You know, yeah. Captain Foley, this show would benefit if it was a call-in show. But that's besides the point. It's time for Palpatine Con. I have done far worse than kill you. I have hurt you, and I wish to go on hurting you. I shall leave you as you left me, as you left her, marooned for all eternity, in the center of a dead planet, buried alive, buried alive. <laughs> So there we go. We got Palpatine Con to add to our list of cons. Half an animation uh, idea. Turd gate. Toilet bowl shaped gate. The rest is on you. <laughs> oh man. Uh, turd gate SG number two. <laughs> Waspinator says, I am just Max. I'm not sure what you mean there. Um, so, oh, and it looks like Captain George has something to say, too. But you guys are just going to, let's take over the show. When I end someone, do you want to know why I use a knife anti-tracker? Guns and phasers are, are too quick. You can't savor all the little emotions. Because you see, in their last moments... People show you who they really are. Who are you, anti-tracker? I will find out. That was disturbing. <laughs> oh my goodness, that was disturbing. Uh, let's see. <laughs> it's... Wow. Um... Yeah, SG. I think it's. I, I think it should be SG number two, though. That's that's. How I think we should call it there, Mr. Captain. Uh, uh, like, look at the title of my. Okay. I was thinking of an angle to analyze the Last Jedi as being an anti-feminist, but disguised as feminist. Okay, I could see that. What are you three D printing? I'm three D printing. Um, hopefully, a slightly improved version of this. This is the USS Anti Trekker 
plaque. As you can see, it is coming along. I'm actually really liking the progress so far. Um, which was your favorite 1980s saying? I've fallen and I can't get up. Where's the beef? Or knowing is... I assume you mean half the battle. Um, honestly, out of those, I would pick where's the beef. Um, although I, I did like the I've fallen and I can't get up. Knowing I, I was never a big G.I. Joe fan, uh, but it didn't come out until I was like in high school, so I wasn't like into it. Um, I'm sleeping with one eye open. Thanks, Captain Foley. Yeah, no one will ever sleep soundly again after hearing Captain Foley's voice uh, talking about knives and killing. What is that from? I, I remember that speech, but I can't remember what it's from. Captain Foley, you got to tell me. Um, uh, actually, applying cold water to a sick burn would explain my life right now. But no, I was talking talking about you saying Mechorandom is not going out with Laura's sick burn. Apply cold water. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> I thought I was trying to figure out what we said. Chrono says one, then two, then three. Oh, as far as uh, you, so you like fallen, can't get up. Where's the beef? And then knowing is half the ball. Yep. Uh, Trekyards picks knowing is half the battle. Um, but Trekyards is a few years younger than me. So for yeah, that's what I thought. So it's Heath Ledger's Joker. Okay. Um, so yeah, the the. You're, you're a few years younger than me, so you would have appreciated the G.I. Joe cartoon more than me. Which, Trekyards, I don't know if you saw, but G.I. Joe made an appearance earlier in this live stream. I think it was just before you saw, you came on board. Uh, well, Aspinator says, it's all the SJW stuff that the movie failed within the story, and maybe that was the point. The same as L337 being more of a parody than homage. I... I doubt it, to be honest with you, Waspinator. Um I mean, I, I kind of could see how you could possibly make that argument but i don't think the film comes across i think they're they sincerely and and be, because here's the thing you got to take into into account all the crap that's come from the people behind the film as well the like kathleen kennedy and ryan johnson and all that they have you know it's not like they're saying oh come on guys we we're trolling you no they they you know they're saying oh if you don't like this movie you're a freaking sexist so uh, you know and, and toxic masculinity and all that crap uh, the time has come to execute Order 66, and it's been erasing the Star Trek franchise to make STD fit into the Star Trek timeline. Uh, I'm telling you, at this point, I almost would be happier if Trek and Star Wars just ended. And and I love both franchises, but... Uh, um, Trek Yard says, but better, and he missed it. I'm not sure. Missed that. Oh, you missed the G.I. Joe thing. Okay, well, somebody's going to have to ask for it because you're going to love it if you see it. Uh, Doc Jobroni says, Yo! Hey, Doc. And uh, so Trolita is here. Good to see you. Captain George says, The best Joker is Mark Hamill. Um, I do think Mark Hamill did a great job. However, I am absolutely convinced that Captain George should do, a, do the next animated version of the Joker. Um, I have micro machine Star Wars ships and vehicles. Cool. Uh, I don't. <laughs> I don't think Ryan Johnson would have intentionally written it with, that way, but art is often out of the hands out of the hands of the creators. Well, but I don't think that. Uh, well, I do think that ultimately what Hollywood is doing right now is hurting the the radical feminist agenda, but. Uh, I don't think they they understand that. Star Wars is just fine. I don't know what you're on about. Okay, Captain George. So you like The Last Jedi. Is that what you're saying? I just want to make sure Captain George likes The Last Jedi. Everybody heard it. Just saying, if everyone is listening for dog whistles, they may miss the music sort of thing. Okay. Well, I still think that The Last Jedi is crap, even... Even and I mean I don't know if you watched the whole review I did on the Last Jedi. I didn't talk about the political crap in that review except for in a very superficial way a couple of times, and but for the most part I didn't get into that. I talked about the character arcs. I talked about the story. I talked about the plot, and it was still a crap movie. Uh, nobody bought back Blake Seven. I think is a good thing because they just mess it up. 
Um, yeah, well, yeah. Uh, Trek Wars, coming soon to a theater near you. Uh, I'm pretty sure you meant Captain Foley, Anti-Trekker, because you said my name. Um, well, you said Star Trek is just fine, so no, I meant you. Cap Did I say Captain Fulton? No, yo, it's you. You think that The Last Jedi is great, so, um, obviously. Uh, Dr. Trek Wars. <laughs> uh, let's combine Star Trek with Star Wars. We can call it Star Wars. Oh, wait, never <laughs> I'm actually writing a piece where I already consider uh, Kira one of the best women in Star Wars. I heard you say that before, King Waspinator. I think you're full of crap, but that's okay. Uh, as well as one of the best villains, a very Phil Noir, Al Alfred Hitchcock kind of character. I, I strongly disagree, but you're entitled to your opinion. 80% of it could have been cut. Are you talking about Solo or The Last Jedi? Because I, th I think the truth could be told, you could say that about either one. A franchise can have a b bad film and be okay. Just look at Star Trek V. That's true. However, um, and, and I'm not saying that Star Wars couldn't survive having a bad film. However, it, it, the problem is, is that The Last Jedi, A, completely assassinates the original trilogy, B, completely undermines The Force Awakens, and C, leaves us with a ending that we have to pick up from which is an impossible place to pick up from and so it's i don't know how they're going to recover from this i really don't oh you said i said captain george should be the name oh okay yeah i did mean captain foley and I, I i apologize thank you for catching that um captain foley do you like the kids in the hall you know it's funny because my wife mentioned the fact that she thinks that you're like dave foley's like older brother or something um and Last Jedi Destroyed My Luke made me sad, yeah. Um, and that's the other thing, is that while Star Trek V was horrible, um, notice that Star Trek VI just basically ignored that it ever happened. And so, and they even redesigned the Enterprise interiors a bit. Um, so, I, I don't think that, uh, but they can't do that with the, with the Last Jedi. They can't just pretend it didn't happen. I don't see it as more or less consistent than any of the other movies. I tend to agree with Patrick Williams that uh, The Last Jedi really angers people because it doesn't reward Phantom's lore fixation. Well, Waspinator, again, I think you're full of crap uh, because it's not unreasonable to expect a story to be consistent with itself. All right? Now, you may think, oh, uh, they're obsessed with lore. No, we want continuity. There's nothing wrong with that. Now... You know, it's and, and, and another thing that, you know, people that are defending this film, I say, oh, well, they just are upset because they didn't get what's in their head can and they didn't get what they thought they were on, you know, they, they wanted. And they're just mad because we made it in a different direction. I'm sorry, but you know what? The freaking uh, Empire Strikes Back, which was not as hated as some of you young people seem to think it was because it was generally loved at the time. And nobody expected what we got in. Uh, Empire Strikes Back. All right, nobody expected a movie where the rebels were going to lose. Nobody expected a movie where we found out that that Vader is Luke's father. Nobody expected a huge battle at the beginning of the movie, but not at the end of the movie. There were a lot of things about that movie that completely subverted our expectations, and it was freaking awesome. And at the end of Empire Strikes Back. Whether you just thought it was good, or you thought it was the best thing ever, or you didn't really care that much for it, you still had one common thread. Everybody wanted to know what happens next. Everybody was waiting for three years for the for Return of the Jedi to come out because they had to know what happened what happens next after that after that movie. Nobody gives a crap about what happens next and, right now. And this movie was an utter failure. It 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 dis and it and you know, it was just uh, sorry sorry I know ranting got to stop. Um, they could be pulling Last Jedi was just a dream. I I don't think they're gonna do anything like that. I really and, and sorry Liger Liger yes spoiler alert Vader's Luke's father. New chat new channel continuity reloaded. That actually wouldn't be a bad channel name. Um, 
<laughs> you gotta say spoilers first, yeah. For a movie from 1980. Uh, I'm done with Disney Wars completely. I, you know, and that's the thing. It's, I don't even, it's, I blame, I know a lot of people want to blame Disney. It's not Disney. Uh, the fact that Disney happens to own Lucasfilm at this point is not what caused this. These films were in pre-production before the Disney deal was brokered. Kathleen Kennedy was already taking over Lucasfilm. And so we, it would have been this way even if Lucasfilm remained independent. And, you know, so George Lucas, fortunately, you know, he's good at reading the room. He knew the fans hated it. And so he could say, oh, I had ideas and they didn't want to do it. You know, um, but he can say whatever he wants. Um, but it was going this way. This is Kathleen Kennedy's fault. She is the one that is all balls deep into this uh, hardcore leftist feminist agenda and how we've got to turn Star Wars into something for girls, which makes no sense because girls already love Star Wars. You didn't need to make it for girls. Hmm. Broom Kid is a tool. <laughs> what do you think of the Star Trek original movie trilogy uh, 2 to 4? Um, that's not how I look. Uh, here's how I look at the original trilogy films 2, 3, 6. That's the trilogy. Um, and so I skip, I, I skip one, four and five tooth. If you watch two, three, six, that is an awesome trilogy. Um, so let's see, Andy Tucker, any predictions for the next infinity war film? I think that Iron Man and Captain America are going to die. Um, however, I, and I think that, uh, they're going to die in the process of restoring most of the universe. I think that. Everybody who was wiped out by the finger snap will come back. However, the people that were killed prior to the uh, finger snap will, in fact, stay dead. That's that's my official prediction. And Doc says, Mega One. After Derek says, another great run. Well, good to see you, Derek. Uh, you're up early. Um, uh, two, three, six... Uh, but my whale movie, don't get me wrong. Four was not a bad film, but it was kind of a, um, we'll just say an interlude between, t uh, three and six. And if you, cause if you look at it, it's like, if you, uh, cause especially if you look at the themes of those films, two was about. Uh, become maturing, becoming middle-aged, dealing with life, dealing with death. Three was truly about losing it all and facing the no-win scenario, and at the same time, maintaining hope for the future. And six, six was about growing old. And, uh, and, and those, we got to see a complete arc for the entire crew, as well as for individual characters. And so I, I loved it. Um, Disney is remaking its old cartoons live action so they can get away from old racist stereotypes in the animation and making girls prominent in Star Wars is to balance their reputation for princess stories. That's stupid though, because Rey is just another Disney princess. And I, you know, you can, you can make all the defensive arguments you want about it, but it, it doesn't matter. It's still crapping on the franchise for no reason. Star Wars, you, you, you really had, you have like, here, you, let me, let me tell you this. So I got a machine here that, uh, I don't really have, just say that this box is a wonderful new machine. It's just a box of gloves, but it's a machine that prints money. All you have to do is hit this button right here and it spits out a hundred dollars, right? It's an awesome machine. So uh, I have this machine. I've been I've been using it to print all the money in the world. And then you say, "Oh man, I you know I really want that machine. How about I just give you enough money so you don't have to worry about the machine anymore, and I'll take the machine." And I'm like, "Okay." So you give me a couple million dollars. I give you the machine. So now you have the machine that prints money, and you say, "You know what? This would make a great doorstop." That's what they did. Um, 
Sorry. That was a brilliant analogy. All right, so... <laughs> And I understand, Waspinator, you're not necessarily defending the films as much, but you're trying to rationalize the films. And I'm sorry, I am done rationalizing stupidity. I'm not going to rationalize it for them. I'm going to say they were freaking stupid. And that's all I'm going to say about it. So, uh, is that a drunken rage? No, no, I am, I'm definitely not drunk. I haven't drank enough Romeo and Ale for that yet. Uh, go get your weird sex gloves. <laughs> Actually... The gloves are uh, in part because uh, for the painting and stuff of this stuff. But, no, nah, I didn't break anything. At least I hope not. If I did, well, then I'll regret it later. Yeah, hope not. Um, uh, hey there, Rationale. Kathleen Kennedy was uh, souped up by an up-and-comer, and he cranked out a piece of crap. Well, yeah, um duped okay i don't know that she, kathleen kenner was duped because i think she got exactly what she wanted i mean think about it that after they finished shooting the last jedi but before its release kathleen kennedy was like oh this is gonna be the greatest star wars movie of all time we're giving ryan johnson his own trilogy this is gonna be the best this is the golden age of star wars that was their attitude just before release um and they were trying to go with that attitude all the way. They, they, they really were right up until Kathleen Kennedy's mysterious disappearance. Uh, and Iger stepping up and saying, it's my fault. Even though it really isn't. I mean, it, he's, he's responsible and I appreciate him taking responsibility for his own company. But he didn't directly cause it. Scotty has the has the best reply on breaking the, the both uh, Prime Directive and Temporal Prime Directive in Star Trek 4. He gives the recipe to Transparent Aluminum and says, how do you know he didn't invent it? That's true. Although, now, now that would violate the Temporal Prime Directive, but not necessarily the Prime Directive because you can't be accused of, of interfering with the natural development of yourself. But Kathleen Kennedy is also big on how Captain Phasma is going to play a big part. Clearly, she didn't know what she was talking about. Well... I don't think she does know what she's talking about. Maybe she thinks that was a big part because Phasma was physically large. Um, it would seem that if one is uh, to continue to be able to enjoy the Star Wars films as they come out, uh, one would be best served to find a way to rationalize them. I'm not interested in rationalizing, uh, rationalizing them. I'm interested in them making a good movie. If, they, if Episode Nine is great... I will be the first person shouting from this YouTube channel, go see it 25 times in the theaters. It's the best movie ever. If it sucks, well, I'm going to say that too. Uh, so Nexus is off to studying. You have a wonderful evening, Nexus. Thank you for spending some time with us. Um, episode 8 was a nightmare and drove the Star Wars franchise into the ground, transforming it into a burn wreckage and should be taken out of Star Wars canon. But you can't just take it out of canon, that's the problem. Because in order to do that, well, then you'd have to drop Episode 7. And then you just have to say, well, what the hell happened for the last few years? You know, they, they, what they need to do is a miracle. They need to make Episode 9, pick it up, and be awesome. I am not betting that that's going to happen. I will go see episode nine with an open mind, but at the same time, there is a, in no way, shape, or form am I optimistic, or do I really even care at this point? That's the biggest problem. It's like, it's hard to even care. Are we to rationalize why or how they made a given film if the given film is crap? I don't get it. I need, I don't need, I'm not going to rationalize it. I mean, I understand Waspinator is doing it as more or less a mental exercise or an, an attempt to be able to enjoy it. And that's fine if that helps them. But for me, no, I'm not going to sit there and try to come up with excuses for it. You know, it's like, uh, I actually, it's funny because I, I was uh, working on some stuff and I sometimes put on random YouTube videos while I'm working on stuff. And there was a video about how villains, it was, uh, oh gosh, I'm trying to remember. It's one of the bigger channels that puts out crap, like, you know, lists of crap all the time. But they were like, oh, 10 uh, animated classic villains that were actually right all along. And I'm like, oh, okay, that could be interesting. And so I'm sitting there working on my stuff and listening. And their explanation was just rationalizations. There was no real, like, they, they tried to say, 
uh, for example, that the kid in, I can't remember his name now, but the kid in Toy Story that was uh, destroying toys and had all the toys scared, the, uh, Sid, uh, the kid next door, um, that, well, he was abused by his family and neglected and obviously had a bad childhood. And it's like, that doesn't make him right. That's just a motivation. That doesn't fix it. And uh, and they said similar things about other other characters. They were all, they were just basically listing why they were doing bad things. But the name of the video was like, oh, how they were right all along. No, that doesn't make them right. And if Kathleen Kennedy was suckered by Ryan Johnson, or if the whole thing is just a parody of feminism, or any of these ideas, doesn't matter. The movie still sucks. And so, yeah. Terrific. A turd poops gold. No wonder half the cops in the galaxy are after us. <laughs> I will not give Star Trek or Star Wars any more money ever again. I'll tell you, you know, I part of me doesn't want to even subscribe to CBS All Access. Um, and if it wasn't for this channel, I probably wouldn't. Um, and I, honestly, I, I don't, uh, you know, and I, I will not watch a CBS television series other than the Star Trek shows strictly for the for this channel. Um, but yeah, I'm not, I'm not feeding the CBS coffers. I'm certainly not boosting their ratings. I'm going to, I, the only thing I'm going to watch from them is Star Trek. Um, but that's because I, I want to do this stuff. And I'm not, by the way, Liger, I'm not blaming you guys, uh, like the producers of Star Trek or Star Wars. I'm simply saying I'm willing to do it because I want to be able to provide this to you. And so, uh, I absolutely, I'm not, I'm not doing it out of, uh, you know, I'm like, like, oh, geez, these stupid YouTube subscribers want me to talk about discovery. No, I want to do it. Um, and, uh, uh, Daniel says, hello, IT Checker. How are you? Uh, just got back from Walmart. There's a lot of cool things I wanted to, uh, get, but I got to wait for my paycheck. <laughs> anti trekkers say this in Palpatine's voice. I can't do Palpatine's voice. Um, however, we do have Palpatine Khan, which we're going to... Uh, let's see. Since I did five PayPal bucks before and I asked for one Uber chat, did I have a choice for another Super Chat? You, I could let you slide, Kronos, because you, you've given so much. Um, so I, what, what's it going to be, my friend? Uh, does the 3D print look weird or is it just me? It does look kind of weird while it's printing that it's because of the pattern that it lays down the plastic. Um, but once it's done, it obviously ends up looking closer to something like this. So, uh, would old four be wrong? It would be wrong. Cause I think Mr. Miles might still be here. And so I really don't want to hurt his feelings. But, uh, let's see here. And so, uh, but I, I do got to say that, um, yeah, the way the 3D printers are, they're, they're really weird. Uh, honestly, they're, they're just kind of, yeah. Nice Spider-Man shirt. Thank you, Daniel. I do appreciate it. Um, Ah, that was refreshing. Thank you. You're the only person I know that can say that seeing a wall of turds flying at you with Ryan Johnson's face is refreshing. Wasn't there 15 normal Super Chats? There was, Thomas, but I had to clear off a little bit of room to for Uber Chat number five. So, um, yeah, so I had to, had to kill one. Um... Put hashtag put Michael to speak more Ebony Mon. <laughs> oh man. But yes, so the uh but yeah, I and what my I think that ultimately I'm gonna probably try to narrow down the super chats to about ten and have like five Ubers and five megas, because I think that would be a little more balanced than 
have them just because I'm not going to make this list go up forever. Um, but then I might have occasional days where I like randomly bring back retired ones. Um, well, it's kind of like your passion uh, and a second income, so that total totally understandable. But uh, for me, I hurts to say it, it really does no, uh, but no more. I'm with you, Admiral. And if I was not doing this YouTube channel, I would absolutely cease and desist all my ties with Trek as much as I love Trek. I mean, I love Trek. And so, I mean, like right freaking here for some research I was doing, I have, you know, this is the first printing, uh, wonderful book, hardbound edition. Um, so yeah, I'm not wearing pajamas. Thank you. Um, uh, we don't know. We don't know why he didn't think Snoke's backstory needed to be explained. We don't know why Haldo never told anyone her plan. Yeah, it doesn't make any sense. And Haldo, yeah, Haldo. I know people have tried to defend her, saying, "Oh, well, you know, Poe is a hothead." Um, yeah, all the more reason to tell him the plan. And also, uh, someone pointed out, Hold, uh, Leia. It actually says what the plan is early on in the film when she says, "We need to find a base." with communications equipment that we can get a, a distress signal out to the galaxy. That was the plan all along. And Poe was in the room when she said that. And so Haldo should have said, well, you already know the basics, so here's what we're doing. There's a base at this location, and we're heading towards it, blah, 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 blah. But, um, and why, yeah, I don't know why they did that. Classic Star Trek tech manual, gotta love it, the war game, Starfleet Battles is based on it. Yeah, there's actually a lot of good information in this book. Um, and, uh, and and in fact, I've, I've, uh, and I don't know if Captain Foley is still here or not, but uh, if he is, I believe that the Starfleet technical manual is considered canon. Um, got that book to L LMAO. What? What? You're laughing at this book, the Star Trek Bible? You're laughing at this book? Shame on you, sir. I mean, this book goes into such detail that they actually show you the color swatches for uniforms. Uh, they actually have, and this is before the days of modern computers, the official Starfleet font. Um... The complete breakdown of Starfleet Armed Forces and uh, the chain of command, uh, the various types of starships. It's actually a really, really cool book. Um, I think la laughing means awesome. Um, well, uh, yeah, I'm not sure why. <laughs> Anakin was a villain. Yes. Uh, Haldo is my main reason for thinking the whole thing is subtly anti-feminist because her attitude caused more problems than it solved. Um, I think that in the minds of the writers, producers, and all that, uh, Haldo was a hero. And she was the greatest hero of all time. And I'm not sure why you say Anakin was a villain. What does that have to do with anything? Um, oh, are you responding to Liger? It says, I'd, I'd like to know why Ryan thought to keep only one Skywalker in the film, and he's a villain, according to Ryan, at least. Um, well, Anakin was a villain in, uh, as far as the prequel trilogy, An Anakin was only a villain in one film. And even then, he was only a villain in, in the last uh, act of that film. Uh, Starfleet was an armed robber? Yes, according to a canon source... Starfleet is, in fact, the army. Or, well, the military. Um, uh, Kylo is very similar to pre-Vader Anakin, actually. Um, nah, I wouldn't say that. I, I don't think that he was... I, 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 he's, uh, he's, he whines, he has that in common with him, but I don't see him as like... Because Anakin was much more disciplined. Um, Anakin was also... Uh, a just a generally oh geez what'd you do this time uh. i want to go on record saying the last jedi is not a terrible film as you guys let on it's not an absolute terrible thing that completely ruins the canon it doesn't by no means does it. i believe one of your arguments in 
your review, if I remember correctly, was how they described the Force. It is an energy field. Obi-Wan literally says it in A New Hope. It's an energy field that surrounds us, it penetrates us, and it binds the galaxy together, or the universe, whatever. The Last Jedi's not that bad. I'm just saying. That's all. And to sit here and just complain about it, I don't know, nine months after it was released is kind of sad still in a way, but... But that's just my opinion. I think Captain George is, is aching to get banned. Um, I, I I disagree with just about everything you just said there, Captain George. And uh, first of all, the only re I, I, the only reason I'm talking about the Last Jedi at all is because one of you guys mentioned it, and so and I talk about whatever we're talking about. That's that's the whole format of this show. Um, however. The, uh, yes, the, the force is an energy field. The difference between what we saw in the six prior films and in this film is that the force was a living spiritual thing in the prior six films. Uh, in, and the reason I say prior six films and I'm not counting, uh, well, uh, Obviously, Rogue One d didn't even deal with the Force much, and the and I'm talking about everything prior to the new era of films, because uh, the Force was used a little bit in the Force Awakens, but there was not a lot of talk about it. Uh, anyway, the um, the Force in the Last Jedi was treated like a uh, an, an atheistic Force, if you will. It's a non spiritual, non living energy field it's simply energy radiated by everything and by the way in the prior films it was be uh, between all living things is what generated the force now the force is in everything not just living things and in the in the original films the force the light side of the force was good the dark side of the force was bad in the new films the light side of the force is one polarity and the dark side of the force is the other polarity. There's really nothing inherently good about the light and there's nothing inherently bad about the dark. They're just kind of different. Um, there's and, and if you look at the behavior of the light side users versus the dark side users, the dark side users show much more discipline, much more training, much more focus on what they're trying to do, where the light side users are cowards and are angry and are using the force out of passion. Everything is flip-flopped. Now, you can like it. I don't care. I don't hate you for liking it. But don't try to pretend for one minute that this film falls into canon. I mean, when I say falls into canon, I mean aligns up with canon. It doesn't. Um, now, if you enjoyed the film and you think that it fits great, that's fine. In fact, you know what you should do? You, and I'm absolutely serious about this, uh, George. Instead of doing your... And I know you're, you're, you, you've got some really good short-form videos out. Do a full-blown defense of The Last Jedi. Do it. Do it. Uh, and I'm absolutely serious. Do a point by point. Take everything that you hear. Those of us that hate on this film, uh, take everything that we talk about, and you rip us to shreds and you prove us wrong. And I'll tell you this: is number one, if you do if you do a good enough job, you'll get some responses from it from other YouTubers and stuff, and could get a conversation going, which is always fun. And B, it'll probably get you some views. Ah, and so, okay. So, before I wind it up, I, there is one thing that I did want to do real quick, and that is just because uh, Captain Foley, I know, was, um, uh, was busy, but he was away, but I think he's back now. Uh, so, to, uh Uh-oh, and Captain Foley actually threw something on it. Let me see what this is here. <laughs> oh, the anti-drecker. He tasks me. He tasks me, and I shall have him. 
I'll chase him round the moons of Nibia, round the Antares maelstrom, and round Perdition's flames before I give him up. You're really starting to make me nervous there, Captain. Um, wow. That's just disturbing. I'll make that video then, I guess. You guys will give it much hate, and I guess someone needs to provide defense for the last year. Hey, I'm saying, I'm saying, if you genuinely believe that it was not a bad film, then defend it. Uh, Thomas says, I called off tonight so you can't, uh, so you can't leave. <laughs> Number nine, please. <laughs> All right, so you got it. And then I also, but actually, before I play Number nine, and uh, because I really did want uh, Captain George to see this. So let me make sure. Let's see. So Captain George, I know you're typing something in Facebook, but type something in the uh, chat uh, for, the, for the show uh, so I know that you can actually see what's on the screen. Because that's I, I want to make sure you can see it before I play. Actually, while I'm waiting for you to respond, I'll play that number nine for... Oops. helps if I click on the right button. Uh, let's see... Nine... I now pronounce you man and turd. You may now kiss. Joshua, what are you doing? <laughs> nothing, nothing! I'm definitely not making you kiss law. I repeat, I am not making you kiss law. I'm definitely not. Did I, did I get you guys confused again? Okay. So this was from earlier. Uh, those of you guys that were on the show towards the beginning got to see this already. But I want, uh, actually, I, because um, Captain Foley is in my generation, uh, I think he'll appreciate this more than most. And so this is a little thing called Meanwhile in the 80s. So, um, does anybody really know why we're fighting anyway? Well, um, I think... Hey, didn't he vote for Trump? Hmm? Get him! Get him! So remember, if anyone has an opinion, they're probably wrong. Now, now we, we know. know! And knowing is half the battle. G.I. Joe! <laughs> <laughs> Cobra Commander and Sling Blade, how would you even do that? <laughs> So a little PSA there for you guys. Remember, if you have a friend that has an opinion, they're probably wrong. And that can, of course, be said for my good friend, Captain George. <coughs> all right, guys. So in all, all honesty, I want to thank you all for, for hanging out with me because, yeah. Uh, yeah, the Thundercats were there. Uh, the Care Bears were there. Yeah, it's just like a, a 80 extravaganza there. Um do the claw from Inspector Gadget. Oh man, that's a hard voice to do. Uh, and you, yeah, you did. That was a funny. Well, I think I even didn't I mention because uh, yeah, you sent me that gif, and then yeah, and I said this was my response when you put the gif in uh, Facebook. Is funny you should send that gif. Uh, Josh was working on an animation about that, so that's the animation that he was working on, or GIF, however you prefer saying it. Um, I like them French fried taters. <laughs> I like those French fried taters. Yeah. Um. So yes. Uh. So as far as the Doctor Claw, he's tough. Inspector Gadget may be back after these messages. <laughs> That's about as long as you can talk in his voice. I don't know how that actor does it. <clears throat> That's that. Yeah. Whew. So that's, that's about it. And just as I was about to sign off, Admiral Broco throws a couple more bucks in and says, Captain George, good luck, but you will fail. <laughs> and wants to see numero seven. Uh, let's see, which is... What is going on? Why is it not loading? Let's try... Oh, that's weird. Hold on. I'm experiencing some technical difficulties here. The source file is missing. Oh, that's because the number is, that's one, let's see. It's actually seven of Swedish meatballs. That's why I'm, I'm getting confused. I was trying to click on the old number seven, which it says that doesn't exist anymore. 
Uh, so that would be there. Mm -hmm. Borg, Borg, Borg. Do the Borg in Chippin, Chippin, the Borg. Borgy, come here, Borgy. Chippy, Chippy, Borgy. <laughs> yeah, with Claw, I, I used to be able to do his voice longer, but now that I'm older, it just hurts my throat too much to do that for, for too long. Um, you know, so I can only do like one sentence at a time. So I've done far worse than kill you. <laughs> and then take a couple minutes to rest and then do the next line. Uh, you great anti-trekker, you can be in show business doing voices in animated series like Simpsons Family Guy and Star Wars animated series. That would be fun, Daniels, but, you know, I'm not a crazy leftist, so they wouldn't want me in Hollywood. I mean, be real about it. Uh, check Discord. Yoda even said it's in everything. What? You must feel the force around you, here between you, me, there, there, I, yeah, yeah. yeah, he's saying the force is everywhere. He didn't say it was generated by the rock. But even so, the force is a living thing. The force has a will. The force is a conscious entity up until the new films. But, you know, hey, that's okay. You want to, you, um... I already want to tweak it a bit, but everyone should check out my stand-up routine video I posted earlier. Time Hitler this summer. Only one man has what it takes to kill Hitler. Time Hitler. Okay. Um, those voice actors are a tight circle. They don't like competition. Yeah. Well, don't worry. I'm too old and not talented enough to, to be any real competition to those guys. Uh, other than just doing some fun things on YouTube. Uh, that's That's about it. Alright guys, I do need to wind it up or I'm going to be here all night. But thank you all so much for being such an awesome crowd. And time Stalin is better, says John. John. <laughs>think i was actually gonna get to bed early uh chronos hits up the paypal deal so let me check that out real quick so i can because you know it's not that i chronos has never lied about it yet but still i'm always i say well i have to verify it because you know i have to have rules otherwise i'm just like not and it hasn't processed yet so let me refresh the screen hmm 
Well, it might be just taking a minute because we're so close to midnight. So I'm going to trust you, Kronos, because you haven't lied to me yet. So he wants two votes. Two votes. Uh, so you guys uh, basically throw in what you want any of the rewards. He Kronos didn't put any limitations on it. So you want one of the Super Chats, one of the Uber Chats, one of the Mega Chats. Don't forget about Meanwhile in the 80s. So pick whatever one you want. And so start throw your numbers into the chat right now. If you don't, then I'm just going to like take Kronos' money and run like hell. Um, so Trekyards likes Uber number five. So we got our first vote for that. Anybody else? Captain Foley Con. <laughs> That's the first. We're actually getting votes for Captain Foley Con. We got a mega chat number one, though. Uh, so that's two for Mega Chat number one and two for Uber number five. So I think we got a consensus here. And we're going to start off with some pain. I may have a. It's not clean. Repeat, I do not have a clean. Take the bloody. And Captain George is still trying to defend the last set. I'm telling you, Captain George, you should seriously, and I mean do a full-out essay on it and make it an awesome video. You should do it. Um, and so... <laughs> so, Trek Yards is trying to say that it's actually Commander Co uh, But he says Commander Blockings, which tells me that it's probably not him. But, uh, you know, he's trying to pretend that Foley is gone and, yeah. He only uses his Captain Foley channel. That's not true. I know I've seen him use this channel. <laughs> oh, man, you're trolling me good. All right, so speaking of which, let's get that awesome awesomeness going. So, um, does anybody really know why we're fighting anyway? Well, um, I think, hey, didn't he vote for Trump? Hmm? Get him. Get him. Get him. So remember, if anyone has an opinion, they're probably wrong. Now, now we, we know. know! And knowing is half the battle. <laughs> oh, man. And so, uh, yes, I do love that one. I think that's a great addition. Um, Last Jedi sucks. Tuscans. That's an interesting way to put it. King outrates, outranks everything. Only God Emperor Trump himself is my equal. 
Um, well, depends on what you're king of. So, you know, there's that. Um, does that one SJW have an eye patch? Not sure what you mean there. Spirit Side says, not a bad animation clip there. Thank you, Spirit Fire. Yeah, that was actually another work of my son, Joshua. He did a great... Uh, all SJWs are Care Bears. <laughs> uh, those kids aren't diverse enough. <laughs> You're... Well, yeah, thanks. <laughs> It's the oh, anti-checker. We will return to your scheduled programming time. shortly, or we are currently Very experiencing true. technical difficulties. Then kill you, anti trekker I've hurt you. And I wish to go on hurting you. I shall leave you as you left me, as you left the commander, marooned for all eternity in the center of a dead YouTube channel, buried in comments, buried in comments. <laughs> When I end someone, do you want to know why I use a knife, anti-tracker? Guns and phasers are, are too quick. You can't savor all the little emotions. Because you see, in their last moments, people show you who they really are. Who are you, anti-tracker? 
I will find it. I have got something better! <laughs> yeah, I was all set to just sign off, listen to some Captain Foley's soothing, psychotic voice. I tell you, that that is some very disturbing stuff that Captain Foley has sent me, so... <sighs> um, but, T, you threw a buck into the chat, so <laughs> I, I figured you guys were all done... But I will go ahead and play one for you. You pick it, and I will throw it up there for you. So tell me what you want, T. And why did you change your name to T? I, I, I don't remember if you told me the other day. I know you told me you changed your name to T, but I don't remember if you told me why you changed your name to T. And now, of course, I have to wait. This T is hopefully frantically typing away. Let's go for the old number one. Old number one. Yep. Sometimes the original is still the best. Kind of like a Werther's original. Oh no, no, please. I, I don't mm -hmm. want to go. I don't want to go. Please. Mm -hmm. No, I don't want to go. No. Mm -hmm. Why would you do this to your mm -hmm. fans, you heartless monster? What a <laughs> an on-air thing that's cool that's cool uh josh says is the tip jar always ready to play super chat for money well yeah i am a greedy bastard i admit it i fully admit it and and honestly this youtube channel is what keeps me from having to work extra hours at my regular job so yes it, i i'm a sucker for it i i'm i'm a capitalist i'm guilty as charged We will return to your scheduled programming shortly, or we are currently experiencing technical difficulties.
someone. Do you want to know why I use a knife anti-checker? Guns and phasers are, are too quick. You can't savor all the little emotions. Because you see, in their last moments, people show you who they really are. Who are you, anti-tracker? I will find out. <laughs> oh, the anti-tracker. He tasks me. He tasks me and I shall have him. I'll chase him round the moons of Nibia, round the Antares Maelstrom, and round Perdition's flames before I give him up. All right, I'm really not sticking around, but for Amy, I'll show this to you because I think it's awesome. So, uh, does anybody really know why we're fighting anyway? Well, um, I think, hey, didn't he vote for Trump? Hmm? Get him! Get him! Get him! Get him! So remember, if anyone has an opinion, they're probably wrong. Now, now we, we know. know! And knowing is half the battle. Alright guys, good night. <laughs>